All right, welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about the concentric constraint. Um, so like always, let's get started by selecting the top plane, holding down Shift and S to start a sketch, letter P to hide the planes, and letter N to normalize that view. Um, so concentric um, is very similar to our uh, coincident constraint that we talked about last week. However, it's it's circles. So I know in our coincident video last week, we did have circles get used on some lines, but this is circles to circles. So again, we'll bring that up, draw some lines, draw some little geometry here. And we have a shape here made out of lines, not fully defined because it's not black like we showed last week. But if I were to take a circle and just draw it off in the space, and then I came in with this coincide tool. If I click my center point and then I went here, I would get a uh, coincident relationship, right? I'm locking in that, that constraint. So what do I use this con uh, concentric constraint for? Well, now that I have a circle coincided with a point, I can draw another circle. Uh, we'll make it three inches so it has a definite uh, dimension. And now I can come up here and click this concentric tool. If you want to know the shortcut key, it is shift and the letter O. So I can hold shift O and click both circles and make them concentric to one another. So concentric, if you hover over, it'll tell you um, make any point coincident with the center of an arc or circle, make the selected arcs and circles share a center point. So it's kind of a redundant constraint. You can do the same things with coincident. However, um, it is a little easier if we look, when I have all these constraints up, right? It's easier to know that, hey, the circle is matching that circle. If I hover over that, those two are tied together. And if I do my coincident, uh, constraint and I look at that, it's going to show me, oh, that line is coinciding with this point and the circle around it is concentric to that point that's coinciding with the line. So I know it's a lot of similar words, similar verbiage, um, but essentially coincide and concentric, it's coinciding with circular objects. So again, we can do it with an arc. Um, I can take just an arc, throw it out over here, and I want those to share the same uh, point. So if I did the two arcs here, now they're concentric with one another. You'll see it got thrown in right there on the inside. Um, kind of great for when you're making repetitive um, geometry. I've done some practice drawings before, and we're gonna try to show an example here in a bit, where they'll give you a view that kind of looks something similar to this and all of those would then need to be extruded to different depths um so this is this is kind of where you'd want to do that having that concentric point you know that everything's gonna line up around the center point um and it's always going to have that same center point okay uh, i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this geometry to kind of show you the way i do this workflow so i don't i very rarely use a concentric tool but again, it is there as an option. Um, what I like to do is if I'm drawing a circle, I don't just draw circles off into space. Everything I do, I always start with the geometry or the uh, origin. I'm going to start that right there. Okay. Uh, we'll give that 16 as my dimension. And if I turn my constraints back on, you will see that now this circle is coincident with my origin point, right? And everything I do from here on, I'm very strategic when I pick where I'm going to put my points. So if I'm going to draw another circle, I'm going to put it somewhere where it's going to add the most constraints possible. So right now, if I were to click this point, you'll see that I have a uh, coincident with that outside circle, and it's going to be vertical from that origin. So if I click here, I can draw another circle, give it a dimension of maybe it's 10. Then I have that dimension all the way through there. Uh, one thing I could see this being used for is if I had a circle that was a construction line, 
And maybe I needed to drill holes in uh, along this circle at 22 uh, inches in diameter, right? And on this, I would need this circle. I need like a 1.5 inch hole drilled there, right? I wouldn't want it to be concentric to these points. I'd need to make sure I'd click certain things, but it might be a uh, another circle might be concentric to the hole that I'm drilling here. So maybe this is the geometry and that's how I kind of go about getting it. Uh, let's go ahead and cut some of these lines out so it makes it a little bit easier to see. Maybe this is what we're dealing with. Something along these lines to where all these shapes would need to get uh, arrayed around. Let's go there. Make that four. Maybe I needed something like this and that circle is gonna be coincident with that 22 inch line. However, this circle, I have no dimensions to kind of figure that out, um, but I know it's or concentric to this one and a half inch circle. So these two circles would then share the same uh, center point. Now, again, like I said, it is with a coincident, but if I were to do it like this, I would be able to get it with a concentric circle. So, like again, like I said, it's kind of redundant. You're going to be able to do everything you need to do with a coincident feature uh, for circles, but later on when you get into 3D, um, if you want your threads, to match to a certain, uh, obviously threads need to be centered uh, in both holes and on bolts, they need to match. Um, there might be some different geometry, maybe some um, elliptical arcs or some, some patterns of travel where you want certain things to be concentric, but other things kind of don't follow or they follow a different path. Uh, but for basic sketching, kind of for what my students do, coincidence is going to be the way to go. But again, this is how you would use that concentric practice. So um, let me know what you think. I love these comments that I've been getting, um, asking how to do certain things and from different other CAD programs. Uh, looks like next week we're going to be doing parallel. Uh, I did just do a video today, a short on uh, a new feature, the midpoint line. Uh, I try to get it in, done in under a minute. Uh, to make that happen quick and easy for you guys. But if you take a look, if I use that midpoint line, I can click a center point and then it'll go out the same dimension in uh, or, or equal to, equal distance from that center point in both directions. So for this were to be a 20 inch line, I'd have 10 on one side, 10 on the other. Uh, let me know if you want that as a full video. I feel like I started this series and of course Onshape would come out with a new tool the second I am, you know, 13 weeks into this thing, but uh, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Again, keep on keeping on, keep up the good work, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want in these extra videos and I will see you guys next week.